Welcome to Mighty Wind Worship Center. Everybody that's online, thank you for visiting us this morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. We are so appreciative that you came to worship with us this morning. I believe God has a good word for you this morning. The message this morning, bear with me, the message this morning is going to come from a prophetic perspective. Now, what that means is this. When you hear it, you're not necessarily going to see it yet. And you're going to question whether or not it's going to come to pass. But when you hear a prophetic message, you have to receive it by faith. You've got to be willing to exercise your faith to believe that which God is saying to you. The Bible says faith without works is what? Okay. So this morning, you're going to be challenged to exercise your faith so that you can receive that which God has for you this morning. Are you ready to exercise your faith? Mm. I'm going to go talk to this side. Are you ready to exercise your faith? Balcony, are you ready to exercise your faith? Are you ready to exercise your faith? Okay. I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to give you all another chance. Are you ready to exercise your faith? The title to the message is simply this. Your position has changed. Somebody saying this morning, Pastor, I don't, mm, I don't think so. I don't feel like my position has changed. I don't sense that my position has changed. I still feel like I'm dealing with the same thing over and over again. I still feel like I'm in the same place. I still feel like nothing has changed. I still feel like Everything is still the same. I've got news for you today. Your position has changed. You may not feel like it. It may not look like nothing has changed. It may not sound like nothing has changed. It may not taste like anything has changed. It may not smell like anything has changed. You may not even think anything has changed. But God is coming to you today to tell you your position has changed. But you're going to have to receive this by faith. Somebody turn to your neighbor and say your position has changed. When, you, when, you're, when you're at work, in your job or in your career, and you get a promotion, and your position has changed, sometimes what you don't realize is that on the surface, when that happens, you're excited because your position is changing. But even though your position has changed, you have no idea what to expect because you've never been in that position before. You don't know what that position requires. The person that hired you gave you a watered-down version so you would accept it. 
They didn't tell you all the work that was going to be required because they wanted you to say yes. They had some hidden subliminal messages in there that you didn't pick up on and you said yes. But you had no idea what to expect. See, that's the thing. When your position changes, you don't realize that everything changes. See, you don't realize that when your position changes, see, you have no idea what your new position is. You don't even know what your schedule is going to be like. You don't know what reports you have to do. You don't even know why you have to do reports. You don't even know who you got to submit them to. You don't even know why you got to do them or what the purpose of them are. You just know they're supposed to be done. You hadn't figured out what time you got to be there, what time you get to leave, what time you get to go to lunch, what meetings you have to attend, when you have to be there, why you have to go, which notes you got to take. You don't have any idea what you're doing. See, when your position changes, you move from being a big fish in a little pond to a little fish in a big pond. When your position changes, you have to evolve and you have to remake yourself and you have to put in the work to fulfill the position. We love hearing promotion. We love hearing position change. We love hearing those things. We've even prayed about them. And God is telling you today, your position has changed. But he's also going to tell you what that entails. Because on the surface, I believe we think one thing. But today, we're going to find out what God means. When he says, your position has changed. So we're going to go to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1, verse 1. And it says this. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, Son of Nun, Moses' aid. Moses, my servant, is dead. Moses was the best leader Israel had ever had. Moses was the man. Moses was the best leader that they had ever seen. Best, I mean, some of those guys had the best experiences of their life and the best encounters with God that they had ever had under Moses' leadership. They got to cross the Red Sea. They got to see God split the sea and they walked across on dry ground. They got to see God provide manna. They got to see God move in miraculous ways. Moses was the best leader they had ever seen. But Moses was now gone. And Israel had come to a place to where they had to stop looking back. Israel had come to a place to where they couldn't just depend on the good old days anymore. They couldn't look back anymore. Has anybody ever felt nostalgic and you felt like you just needed to go back? See, most of the time, we miss God and what he's doing now because we spend so much time in the good old days. 
See, God is telling you your position has changed. But part of your position changing is this. You got to leave what's behind behind. You can't be, you don't have time to be nostalgic. What was is simply a reference point, not a dwelling place. You don't have the time to go live there. You can use it as a reference point. You can use it as a learning experience, but you can't stay there. Most of us are missing God because we're staying in the good old days. Now you ask, why was that the good old days for Joshua? Joey, come here real quick. You stand on stage, buddy. Why was... Why was God trying to remind Joshua not to get stuck in the good old days? Why were those days so good for Joshua? See, if you'll remember back in Scripture, there was a scene to where Joshua was in the battle. He was the general, and he was leading the army, and he was fighting. And Moses was standing up on the hill, and he had his hands up. And as long as he had his hands up, the army that Joshua was leading had victory. See, even Joshua had experienced some of the best times in his life under Moses' leadership. And the reason why it was the good old days for Joshua was this. Joshua had life made. Moses was his protection. Moses was his leader. Moses was the one fighting in the spiritual realm. Moses was his safety net. Moses was his covering. Moses was his re responsibility. All Joshua had to do was be like the scripture said, he was Moses' aide. All he had to do was be Moses' aide. All he had to do was enjoy the protection that Moses provided for. So Joshua loved being Moses' aide. <laughs> Because he didn't have to carry no weight. Ooh. It was easy before we knew Jesus. We didn't have to carry the weight. We didn't have to be aware. We didn't have to be obedient. We could do whatever we wanted to do. See, but now your position has changed. And now you're aware. Now you know. Now life isn't the same. But look at what, look at what God says. Verse 2. Stay right there. So he said, Moses, my servant is dead. I'm sorry, Moses. Moses, you can go back and sit down. <laughs> but look at this. Moses, my servant, is dead. And then God goes, now then. Woo. I, I, I need you to know that when you hear that, see, a shift in the conversation just happens. If you're not paying attention, you miss it. See, because now, he says, now then. See, now God has shifted. He's no longer talking to Moses' aid. 
He's now talking to Joshua the leader. It's switched with two words. Now then. And it's switched. He said, now then, you and all the people. <laughs> Joshua was accustomed. He was accustomed to hearing what Moses and hearing direction from Moses. But God said, now then, you and all the people. See, now he switched. He goes from Joshua the general to now he's Joshua the leader. Some of you in here today, God is saying, now then. Enough is enough. You've been Moses' aid for long enough. You've been living in the past for long enough. You've been sitting in the background for long enough. You've been holding out for long enough. Your position has changed. The difference between Joshua and us is Joshua was willing. When he said, now then, and he said, you and all these people. Joshua was willing to submit. God is telling us now then, and is changing our position, and we're fighting him every step of the way. God has been trying to change your position, and you've been arguing, and you've been fighting, and you've been saying, why am I dealing with this? Why am I going through this? Why am I facing this? Why am I fighting this? Why am I suffering like this? It's because your position has changed, but you hadn't changed with it. You're still trying to be the big fish in the little pond, and he's already moved you. He's already moved you, and you're the little fish in the big pond. And now he's trying to teach you and mature you in your new season, but you keep fighting him because you want to be the big fish in the little pond in your old season. You keep trying to relive the good old days, but the good old days are gone. The good old days are gone, baby. You can fight it all you want to, but you can't go back. You can fight till you're blue in the face, but you can't go back. My daughter told me, she said, she just started ninth grade this year. In the first couple of weeks of school, she said, ooh, I miss middle school. She said, I miss middle school. I wish I could go back. And you know what's so funny is, last year when she was in middle school, she ain't like it. <laughs> but that's how we are. Listen to me. That's how we are. God, you have been praying for God to move you. You've been asking for God to deliver you, and he moves you. And you get over here, and then you say, whoa, I wish I was back where I was. Even though you were complaining while you were here. God has changed your position. Just like he did Joshua. Joshua was having to come to the realization 
that that which was no longer is. Sometimes that's the hardest lesson for us to learn. That which was no longer is. And you can't go back. And then God said, you and all these people. He, God drew a line in the sand. See, because understand, Joshua used to be part of all these people. Joshua used to be, when God was talking to Moses, he was telling Moses, you and all these people. Joshua was part of all these people. Now, the position has changed. And he's saying to Joshua, you and all of these people. See, when your position changes, your perspective has to change. A position change requires a perspective change. If you're still looking, listen to me, as God has moved you, if you continue to look at this like you did that, you will be miserable. God didn't move you here so you could continue to think like that. He moved you here with the understanding that he was going to give you a new thought process, new attitudes. He's going to teach you. You just have to surrender yourself in this new place. See, we don't like not knowing. We don't like not knowing. This is a new position. You don't know what God has in this season. You hadn't figured it out yet. And the only way you're going to know it is if you walk it out. See, when you get a promotion or a position change at work, in the beginning, you don't know what your responsibilities are going to be. And you don't figure it out. It takes you almost a year before you become beneficial to that company. You know nothing your first year. And in that first year, you are figuring it out. You're having to walk it out. You're having to get up and go to work every day. And every day you get up and you go to work, you learn something else. And you learn something else. And you learn something else. That by the time you get to the end of the year, you've somewhat got your head wrapped around the season you're in. And now you've got to walk this thing out so that you can grow and mature in the place God has you now. But most of us are over here and we allow the enemy to lie to us and we allow him to deceive us and to manipulate us and we abort the process before it even starts. We don't even get started and we abort it and say, I would rather be where I was. So Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all of these people. Then God says, now you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give them to the Israelites. So when your position changes, it requires a perspective change. And for your perspective to change, you have to get ready to cross. When your perspective has to change, that means your preparation has to change. Your preparation has to change. When you have a new job, you don't get to prepare every day in the new job like you did in the old one. Your preparation has to be different for you to cross over into the promises God has for you. 
Listen, when Joshua was just the general of the army, he was a warrior. He was prepared for that. But now God moves him to the leader and now Joshua doesn't get to go down and fight with the army. Joshua has to stay up here and he's having to fight in the spiritual. So what he used to do to prepare for that is different than what he's got to use to prepare for this. You're in a different position. What you use to prepare for your previous season won't work trying to prepare for this one. That's what's happening. We're trying to use what we know to prepare for what we don't know. And it's not going to work. You're going to frustrate yourself and you're going to question God and ask God where he is and he's going to say, I'm here but you're not listening to me. Your position has changed. So now your perspective has to change and the way you prepare has to change. See, because when you get moved to a new level, it requires you to fight new devils. I don't know if everybody heard that. When you get moved to a new level, it, re it requires you to fight new devils. And if you are preparing for the new level of devils, you're going to have to fight the way you prepared over here, you're already losing. You're already losing. I cannot prepare the way that I did. God is trying to retrain you. Did y'all hear me? God is trying to retrain you for the season that he's moved you to. He's trying to retrain you, but you are kicking and screaming and fighting and yelling and saying no God and he's trying to retrain you so that you can become effective in the place that you're in verse 3 says this now God tells Joshua this He said, your position has changed. And then he said, I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. He said, in this changed position, in this new place, listen, I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. Now on the surface, that looks like God is saying, I'm going to give you everything that you want. What God is saying is this. See, understand something. God gives us promises. Everybody agree with that? God gives us promises. And his word is truth and his word does not come back void. Now let me share this with you. However, our obedience is what secures the promise. I need you to hear that. While God gives us promises, 
It's our obedience that actually secures that promise. In other words, if you're saying, God, you promised me this, but it hadn't been secured, now I've got to check my obedience. Because it's my obedience that will secure the promise. Listen to what God told him. He said, I will give you every place where you set your foot. As I promised Moses. So, as I take steps of faith and, and become obedient to God, as I set my foot, then God gives me that place. But I have to pick my foot up and set it first. See, I have to be obedient to what God is telling me to do. If God tells me to do something, but I don't do it, then how can I expect to secure the promise? Woo. There are some people in this building today. There are some people within the sound of my voice that God has promised you something for your household. For your household. And you've been waiting for it to come, but it hadn't been secured because you haven't been obedient. I'm not saying that's always the scenario. But in this particular message, at this particular time, it is the scenario. God is speaking to our disobedience. And he's saying, don't expect to secure the promise if you're not willing to be obedient. I've given you a promise, but that promise requires obedience. And if he tells you as head of household that this promise is coming, then your obedience is required to walk that out for you to secure the promise. Understand something. God has changed the position of Mighty Wind Worship Center. Whether you realize it or not, in the spiritual realm, he's changed the position. Now, I, as head of this household, have to be obedient to what God is saying so that we can secure the promise in the physical. Do you understand that? And I have to be obedient even if you disagree with me. Even if you don't like it. Even if you think it stinks. Even if you think I've lost my mind. I've got to be obedient to what God said so that the promise can be secured for MWWC in the physical. The same thing has to happen for you in your household because you are the priest of your household. And if you want to see the position that God has changed you to be secured in the physical, then it's going to require you to be obedient even if everybody in your household disagrees or is throwing a fit. That position change don't feel so good now, does it? Verse 4. Verse 4 says this. He told Joshua, with your position change, your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. So in other words, a part of this position change is that your territories have been enlarged.
When God changes your position, when he moves you forward, he enlarges your territory. And sometimes we get excited about that. Woo! My territory is enlarged. But an enlarged territory means an enlarged responsibility. An enlarged territory, him increasing your boundaries, him increasing your borders, him increasing your territory means that he's increasing your level of responsibility. He's increasing what you're responsible for. He's increasing what he's giving. The Bible says to whom much is given, much is required. So if he enlarges your territory, he enlarges your responsibility, which is why, listen, which is why you have to have a perspective change, which is why your preparation has to change, which is why your obedience has to be intact, so that you can be responsible enough to handle the enlarged territory. Shoot, y'all being taught today, baby. Y'all are being taught today. Shoot, people go to conferences to hear messages like this. If God hasn't moved you, it's because he can't trust you. It's because he can't trust you for the next place he has for you. Because your perspective hasn't changed, your preparation hasn't changed, your obedience hasn't changed, and he knows if he gives you more responsibility, you're going to be irresponsible with it. So he can't give it to you because you're not ready for it. Because if he gave it to you, it would destroy you. Hence, that's why you're suffering. Uh-oh. We went back to the S word. I thought we was through with that last week, Pastor. When we won't change our perspective, listen to me. When we refuse to change our perspective, when we refuse to change our preparation, when we refuse to be obedient to secure the promise, God will allow suffering <laughs> so that he can get your character right so that he can move you to the place he wants you to be. See, the Bible tells us that God moves us from glory to glory to glory. That means he's not going to allow you to stay in the same place. And he will use whatever he has to use to get you to move. Do you get that? Just like with the eagle. The mom and the eagle. See, Pastor Henry, we were talking about that this week. Just like the mom and the eagle. When she has baby eaglets, she doesn't just let them get comfortable. As babies, she puts thorns in the nest. She puts thorns in the nest so that they don't get comfortable so that when the eaglets land on the thorns, it's not comfortable and they'll go find somewhere else to live. She helps them mature. She causes suffering to prepare them to go. They don't even know how to fly yet. And she puts thorns in the basket in the nest and they land on it, and they get up, and then they try to fly away. And the first time they try to fly, they take off, and they go straight down. And mom is watching. She's afar watching. She's seeing all of this happen. 
And then she flies down, she catches him, she picks him up, she brings him back up to the nest. And then the baby gets on the thorns again and gets uncomfortable and takes off and tries to fly again. And guess what? It's... <laughs> That's what we look like in the new position. We look like this. Because we don't know where we're going. We don't know how to fly. And God has put thorns in a nest. And he's saying, you're not going to get comfortable here, baby. I'm not going to allow that to happen. Because my responsibility is to make you look like my son, Jesus. And I'm going to move you from glory to glory to glory. No matter what it costs. No matter what it takes. No matter what I have to use. I'm going to use that. So you don't just sit there. So that eaglet gets on the thorns and it gets up and it tries to take off and it's doing this and it's falling and mom comes and picks it up again. She takes it back up to the nest. Sits on the thorns again. But the third time something happens. The eaglet jumps off. And in the beginning... It's freaked out, but then all of a sudden, it finds, it finds its rhythm. It finds its rhythm, and it begins to flap, and it's not falling anymore. All of a sudden, it sees itself, and it's rising. It's not falling. It's rising. And before you know it, it's in full swing. And that baby is flying, and it's moving, and it's adjusting to the new place. You're a baby eagle in a big world, and God is trying to mature you. This is about maturity, baby. God is trying to grow you. Some of you have been baby eaglets for too long. This nest is not going to be comfortable. God has called Mighty One Worship Center to be a hospital. Pastor Henley told me this. I love when God surrounds me with people. Pastor Henley told me, she said, Mighty One Worship Center is a hospital. She said it's a hospital for healing. She said, Mighty One Worship Center is not hospice, it's a hospital. <laughs> See, when you're on hospice, they make you comfortable. When you're in the hospital, there ain't no comfort. There ain't no comfort. There ain't no rest. There ain't, they trying to get you out of there. That's what Mighty Wind Worship Center is. We're a hospital. You're going to come in. You're going to get healed. And you're going to become a disciple. And then you're going to go make disciples. You're going to come in. You're going to get healed. You're going to become a disciple, and then you're going to go make disciples. You're going to come in, you're going to get healed, you're going to become a disciple, and then you're going to go make disciples. You're going to come in, you're going to be healed, you're going to become a disciple, and you're going to go make disciples. You're going to come in, you're going to be healed, you're going to become a disciple, and you're going to go make disciples. We're not coming here to check off a box. The New Testament church was created to make disciples. We're going to make some disciples. And we're going to be serious about it. You're going to come in and you're going to get healed. And that healing process, it ain't going to feel good. You're not going to feel comfortable. You're not going to feel anything. You're going to feel like it's getting worse before it's getting better. But healing is going to come forth. 
And as a byproduct of the healing, you're going to become a disciple because you know that God was the only person that could do what he did in your life. And you're going to become a disciple. And then it's going to compel you to go make disciples because you know what God did for you. You're not just going to come and sit in the chair sucking up the AC. You're going to come in and tell everybody you bring. You're going to come in. You're going to get healed. You're going to become a disciple. And then you're going to go make a disciple. And we're going to repeat that process over and over and over and over and over until you go to be with the Lord. That's the process that we're going to live in. We're going to live in that process. We're going to live in that process. We're going to come, we're going to be healed, we're going to become disciples, and we're going to make disciples. You're going to hear me say that till I'm blue in the face. And I'm black, it takes a lot for me to be blue in the face. <laughs> Next year, you're going to hear me say that a, a million times. Moving forward, you're going to hear me say that a million times. Verse 5 says, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. In the position change, God had promised them the land, the promised land. What's so funny is that on the promised land that was declared to be theirs, there were already enemies living on it. See, listen to me. God is not saying to you that because your position has changed, you're not going to have issues. He's not saying to you that because your position has changed, you're not going to have to fight. He's not saying to you that because your position has changed, you're not going to have to be obedient. He's saying, look, your position has changed. The promised land awaits you. No matter what enemy is on your land, listen, no matter what enemy is on your land, uh, y'all didn't get that. No matter what enemy is on your land, None of them will be able to stand against you. None of them will be able to stand against you. I don't care what comes. I don't care what devil shows up. I don't care what lying, deceiving, manipulating devil shows up. It won't be able to stand against you. And you know why? Because it says this. As I was with Moses... So I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. The reason why nobody will be able to stand against you is because of the presence of the Most High God is with you. You're going to have to fight. You're going to have to kick. You're going to have to scratch. You're going to have to claw. You might have to crawl on occasion. I don't care if it's your family. I don't care if it's the devil. I don't care what it is. Nobody will be able to stand against you because of the presence of the Most High God. The presence of the Lord is with you. The presence of the Lord is in you. The presence of the Lord is around you. The presence of the Lord goes before you. David said, where can I go? He said, where can I go that your presence is not already there? 
When I lie down at night, it's there. When I wake up in the morning, it's there. Whether I'm in the heavens, it's there. Whether I'm in the depths of hell, it's there. No matter where I go, the presence of the Lord is there. Your position has changed. Your position has changed. Now, now, you have to walk it out. You got to be obedient so that you can secure the promise. I told you this was going to require you to exercise your faith. This message is going to require you to exercise your faith. Every day you get up, you're going to have to exercise this. Every day you get up. When you go a little bit further in this scripture, God tells Joshua, as long as you meditate on my word day and night. <laughs> as long as you meditate on my word <laughs> day and night. So that you may be careful to do everything written in it. It says, then you will be prosperous and successful. But it's going to require you to meditate day and night. Night and day. And when you do that, you will secure the promise. Father, this day in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your word. Lord, I, I hear it, and I see it, and I sense it, and I smell it, and I taste it, that our position has changed. Whether everybody else can see it or not, I can see it. Lord, and I recognize that the position has changed. I recognize that their position has changed. Lord, and I thank you for your word and for being honest with your people and telling them exactly what they have to do to secure the promise. Father, and I pray that when, when we leave here today, that we hold on to that word and we hold on to that promise and that we put our big girl pants on and our big boy pants on and Lord, that you would strengthen our back so that we can walk forth in perseverance and secure the promise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.